Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and Friends Reaching Souls Unlimited with the Gospel of Jesus Christ Raising up Jesus believers throughout New England, the nation, Canada, and the world And now our pastor, E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sincere hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs, and I'm certain that God is going to do just that. We have a word that we're going to share with you today, and here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about your believing. And here's the thing, of what, well, why is my believing so important? I know about believing and all like that. Well, here's what I want to tell you. If you need a miracle, you're trusting God for something, you're believing for something or whatever, I'll, t- I'll say it this way. Maybe there's something that in your life right now that, that really, you know, from, from a natural, physical point of view, you would say it's impossible. Uh, you know, Abraham and Sarah, they, they were faced with something like that. They were, you know, hundred, Abraham's 100 years old, too old to have children. Sarah's now in her 90s, too old to have children. Uh, been barren all over her life and so on. That's what you would call impossible. And God has promised to have this child. Well, here's what here's the thing. The Lord said, what made it possible, well, here's the thing. What made it possible for Abraham and Sarah is the same thing that's going to make your impossible situation possible. And you know what that is? It's your believing. The Lord gave me a simple statement. He says, your believing makes it possible. <laughs> what makes the impossible possible? You're believing. Your believing makes the impossible possible. Okay? We're going to tell you a little bit about that in a minute. But we thank God for you. We hope you're enjoying the program. If you are, to God be all the glory. We have a message that we want to share, much more message than we have time to share. So we're going to try to get into this as quickly as possible. If you want more information about the ministry, go to the website, eiosborne.org. And Osborne is O S B O R N E. Okay, you can call the information prayer line at 508-746-4085 or you can <clears throat> uh, write us at the Time Is Now, Post Office Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts 02361. That's the Time Is Now, Post Office Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts 02361. And we'd love to hear from you today. Uh, a young lady came to the church <clears throat> recently and she said she came because Many times I say, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know if you're listening and you're watching, especially those of you listening on WSMA and so on. And she said, well, I decided I would just come. Well, she came one Sunday and she came the next Sunday and she's coming. And so thank God for that. And maybe that might happen with you, you know, because you might get a little bit more out of coming. I don't know, but we'd love to have you. You know, so many people don't go to a church like this person. They said, well, I don't really go anywhere right now. I'm not really rooted. I'm not grounded. I'm not in any church right now. Well, that's you. That, that's maybe why you're listening to the radio right now. Maybe that's why you're watching the television right now. But every believer, I believe, needs to be a part of a, 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 a fellowship, a Christian fellowship of believers. We call it church, you know. Uh, and you need a pastor. You need a shepherd. You know, you're called sheep. You know, you're, you're called part of God's sheep, you know. And God has shepherds that he's placed over his sheep in this world. And so I think everyone needs that. You know, I think, and I think we should... Uh, assemble together, as it says in Romans and Hebrews 10, 25, that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Now, God knows the opportunities we have and we would have for with radio and television and the internet and all these different things, but he still recognizes the importance, the significance of assembling together in something we call church and so on. And so I think it's important until you should do it. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word and this opportunity to minister to your people, those listening on radio, those watching by television. I pray your blessing upon every one of them right now. Lord, you know the needs and the situations of your people. And because it is your will for them to be healed, made whole, to be helped, to be strengthened, to prosper, I just pray that your will would come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done in their lives as it is in heaven right now. We release your will in their lives, and I know your will is good to heal, to help, to save, to deliver, and to set free. Do it now, Lord. Every person in need of healing and help, give them, manifest the help that they need as they believe in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, God is so awesome, and he's good, and he's awesome all the time. And I I just want to get into this word, so let's get into the word right now. Let's go, first of all, to Isaiah uh, chapter 53, Old Testament. Um, yeah. So now, in Isaiah 53, first of all, 
God says, who hath believed our report, and to whom, are the, who is, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, first of all, you have to believe, okay? Who's believed God's report? His report is his word, all right? Who believes God's word? Who believes the good news, the gospel, and so on? You have to believe. If you're going to be saved, you have to believe. According to Romans chapter 10, it says, with the heart you believe and with the mouth you confess unto. So unto salvation. And so everything, not just salvation, but everything, anything that you will ever receive from God, you're going to receive it by grace through faith, through your believing. Believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth. But you have to believe. What makes it possible for you to be saved is your believing. All right? Your believing makes it possible. What makes it possible for you to be healed? Your believing. See, that's your part. God's part is done. It's settled. You know, in Psalms 119, it says, Thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. God's part, the finished work of Jesus, the blood that he shed, the stripes that he bore, uh, you know, all that, it's, it's settled, it's finished. Wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, chastisement of your peace was upon him, with his stripes you're healed. That's settled. The part that, that, that's kind of shaky is our part. All right, are believing because we waver in that and so on. And so who hath believed our report? And, and to whom of the arm of the Lord is revealed? So first of all, you have to believe. And your believing is what makes the salvation, the healing, the prosperity, all of those things possible. And so I'm not surprised that the devil he even has many preachers telling people that that's not for today and God isn't healing people today and God's not doing this today and God doesn't want you to prosper and that's health and wealth gospel and t- t- saying all these negative things about it because... You know, what makes it possible is you're believing it, all right? Now, someone will say, well, God is God, and he's sovereign, and he's in control, and whatever his will is, that's what's going to be done. Well, that's not true. And, and even when you consider salvation, does God want the world to be saved? Did Jesus die for the sins of the world? Yes, he died for the sins of the world, past, present, and future. But the only ones that, uh, who will receive all right, the, 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 the salvation, the forgiveness of the sins, the redemption, all the things that Jesus paid the price for them to have are those that believe, those that believe it, that, that believe in the heart and confess with their mouth. Salvation, the price for it has been paid, but the only ones who will receive it are those who believe. It's, it's there. God wants to give it to you by this thing called grace, this free gift and all that, but you can't receive it without believing. All right? Those who don't believe, well, you won't receive. Your, your believing is what makes it possible for you to be saved. Your believing is what, what makes it possible for you to be healed. Your believing makes the impossible possible. Okay? How do I receive the impossible? Believe. So he says, and then it says, and to whom is, who, whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, the arm of the Lord, when you can look at that and study it or whatever, you know, usually when you see the arm of the Lord moving on someone's behalf, the hand of the Lord, the arm of the Lord, it's dealing with God's might and power and ability and so on, you know, for, 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 for deliverance or whatever it might be. But it's dealing with God manifesting his might, his, his strong arm, his power, his ability, delivering and so on. And so, but here's the thing, that might and power and all those miracles are revealed to who? Them that believe, the believers, believers. So who hath believed our port? And to, whom of, of the, uh, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It's revealed in the lives and situations of those who believe. God's ability to save you, forgive you, you know, cleanse you, make you a new creation in Christ Jesus, all comes through your believing. It's manifested because you believe, all right? Now, if we go to Mark chapter 9 uh, and verse 23, Jesus says here, all right, Jesus said this, the man brought his son to the disciples. They couldn't deliver his son from this dumb spirit, as it's called in Scripture. And Jesus is, you know, telling them it's because of their unbelief in the book of Mark that they couldn't cast the spirit out. But it says here in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So here's the, here's the first part. You got to believe. If thou canst do what? Believe. Then what did he say? All things are possible. To who? Him that believeth. So, listen, you're believing does what? Makes it possible. He says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Because listen, your believing is what makes it possible. So now, if thou canst do what? Believe. Now, now, when he said believe, that's, that's that's the start. That's the beginning part. But then he said, all things are possible to who? Them that do what? Believeth. So believing is where you start. But what happens is this. Let's say on Monday, you, if you didn't get an instant, immediate manifestation uh, answer, you know, to the prayer and to the thing that you were believing, 
Well, what happens then is you have to continue to do what? Believe. You have to continue to believe. On Monday, you know, you, you believe, but then by, by Thursday, it still hasn't happened. You have to continue to believe because he said all things are possible to him that does what? Believeth. And believeth means believes and continues to believe. A good example of that we mentioned already is Abraham. God spoke to him, Genesis uh, chapter 12. He said, you know, he's going to leave your house, your father's house, and make you great, make your name great, all these things. I'm going to bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you, make your family great. God made him all these covenants and promises and then promised to give him a son through his barren wife, Sarah. Well, 24 years later, he still had no son. Now he's 100 years old, too old, too old to have a child. You know, his wife who might have been possible because she was young enough to have children, is now too old to have a child. So she's been barren all along, but now she's even too old to have a child. You know what? Abraham had to continue to believe. He believeth, okay? He was believeth. That's, he was in a believeth mode. He didn't just believe God while it was possible, but the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 4, it says that he hoped against hope. He, he hoped he, while, when the situation became hopeless, he continued to hope. All right. He was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he had spoken. And so that's what believeth is all about. It's all about even if the situation gets worse, even if it comes to a place from being from being possible to being impossible, you continue to believe. And if you'll continue to believe, you know what? All things are possible. See, it's not possible. Believing is it, it makes it possible. But listen, to the guy who believes and not going to continue to believe, all things are not possible to him. But all things are possible to the guy, to the person who will believe and continue to believe. See, because if you believe on Monday, but by Thursday you stop believing, you, you, you doubting, wavering, you don't, want, you don't believe it anymore, it's not going to happen. You know, on Monday you believe, but by Monday night you don't believe it anymore, it's not going to happen. All things are possible to him that believe F. And for whatever the reason, I've seen instant, immediate answers and manifestations. We see that. But there are many times when you have to wait. There's a process you have to go through. There's time and so on and the waiting and all like that. And you've got to continue to believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. See, there are people who believe. And if they get an instant miracle, great. If they get an instant manifestation, great. And you know why it happened? It happened because of their believing. Their believing made it possible. They're believing, okay? They, they, they prayed Monday morning. By Monday afternoon, they had their answer. Their believing made it possible. They prayed Monday morning. By Monday night, they had their answer. Their believing made it possible. But here's the thing. What about the guy who prays Monday morning? If, if you if pray Monday morning, but by Monday night, you're not believing anymore. Well, that's, it's over, you see? What makes all things possible? So for the guy who can believe until, you know, for the guy who can believe 12 hours, there are some things that are possible. For the God that can believe, you know, 24 hours, there are some things that are possible. For the God that can believe for a month, there are some things that are possible. For the God that can believe for a year, there are some things that are possible. But for the God who can believe until he receives the manifestation, all things are possible. To him that what believeth. And how long is that believeth? Until you receive the manifestation. For the person that believeth, for how long? Until you receiveth, right? All things are possible to him that believeth. But listen, it's your believing that makes it possible. Secondly, in Mark chapter 11, okay, see, your believing makes it possible. Your believing makes the impossible possible. So then Jesus has cursed the fig tree in Mark chapter 11. Uh, he's cursed the fig tree, and he's, he's telling the disciples to have the faith of God, all right? So in Mark uh, 11, verse 22, and Jesus answering, saith unto them, have the faith of God, had the God kind of faith, all right? And so verse 23, he says, but verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, listen, but shall believe that those things that he shares will come to pass. Why is he going to see the things that he say, says come to pass? How is it, why is it that this person, you and I, can see the things that we say come to pass. How is that possible? Because we believe that the things that we say will come to pass. Our believing makes it possible. 
Your believing is what makes it possible. He says, if you believe in your, if you, he says, if you don't doubt, but believe what you say, you'll have what you say. Therefore, I say unto you, verse 24, what things whoever you desire when you pray, what things whoever you desire when you pray, whatever you desire when you pray, what do you do? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You have it because you believe that you receive it. Your believing makes it possible. Now, we're going to go to oh, maybe Numbers chapter 14. I'm already out of time. I mean, but here's the thing. Your believing makes it possible. Now, when God talked about, when Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible for him that believeth. He did not say all good things, all positive things, all nice things. He said all things are possible. He said all things. Now, if it were only good things, only nice things, you know, and and pleasant things, he would have had to say that, but he didn't say that. He said all things are possible to him that believes. Now, some of you say, oh, pastor, that's a little stretch. Of course, that's what he meant. No, he didn't. That's not what he, he said what he meant. All things are possible to him that believeth. And all things is exactly that, all things. Because listen, for the person who believes the negative, evil thing, that make, they're believing, <laughs> they're believing made it possible. For the person that believes the blessing, the good thing or whatever, their believing made it possible. Even if that negative evil thing is impossible, you know what makes it possible? Their believing. When Jesus said all things are possible to him that believeth, he meant exactly that. He said all things and he meant all things are possible. So you have to decide what you're going to believe because whatever you believe, when you believe, that's what makes it possible, okay? You say, well, I don't know about that. Well, let me give you an example. I don't have time to read it all, but if you know about, uh, if you know about Eve, Adam and Eve in the garden, God says, see that tree? Don't eat that fruit. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That fruit is forbidden, uh, forbidding you to eat that. Well, and God says that if the day you eat it, you're going to sure, surely die. Genesis chapter 3, Satan comes along. He says, hey, hath God said? And Eve says, hey, God says, you know, the day we eat that, we're going to die. That, here's what Satan says. You won't. You will not die. He says, God knows the day you eat it, you're going to be as a God. You'll know good and evil, right? He says, you won't die. You'll know good and evil. Well, here's what Eve is thinking, I believe. Eve is thinking, evil? What's that? See, so right away, see, because man only knew good. Everything that God created was what? Good. You read Genesis chapter 1, he created something, and he said it was good. And he said it was good. And he created something else, and he said it was good. And at the end, he says, it's very good. The only thing men knew was good. So when Satan says, hey, if you you, you won't die, you'll be as a god, you'll know good and evil. Evil was something that Eve didn't know. And, And so she decided to what? Believe the devil. First of all, God said, the day you eat, you will die. You think she wants to die? She doesn't want to die. But here's what happened. She decided to believe the devil when he says, you won't die. Read it in Genesis chapter 3. She believed him, and she ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and brought death and sickness and disease and all the negative evil things into the world. That was the devil's plan. And the bottom line is this. His plan to bring chaos and destruction and death and all that into the world, sin into the world, could not have been accomplished without Eve believing it, believing him. Her believing the devil, Eve's believing the devil that she would not die, that she would have knowledge of good and evil, that she would be as a god. Her believing the devil, all right, is what allowed his evil, wicked plan to succeed. Eve believed it. Her believing made it possible. Now, here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, God and the devil want and need the same thing. Don't turn the radio off. Don't change the channel. I said it. I'm going to explain it in just a moment. God and the devil want and need the same thing. But what do they want and need? They want you to believe, but they also need you to believe. Listen, you can't be saved without believing. You can't be healed without believing. You can't be delivered. You can't prosper without believing. And as it is with God, so it is with the devil. 
Eve, his plan with Eve never would have been carried out without Eve believing. So he wanted Eve to believe his lie. You won't die. You'll be as a God. You'll know knowledge. You'll have the knowledge of good and evil. And he needed Eve to believe because without Eve's believing, it doesn't happen. You know, Job said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. It was Job believing that his children would curse God and all that. He believed that, kept sacrificing and all these different things. And then he said, the thing that I feared, I, he believed it. That's what brought fear because he believed it. Fear is faith or believing that negative evil thing can possibly happen. That's where fear comes from. It's of the devil. You believe this negative thing, evil thing. That's what fear is. It's faith. It's, it's, it's the opposite. It's negative faith, if you want to call it that. But it's believing that negative. So the thing that Job believed came upon him. What made it possible? His believing, his fear. That's what made it possible, okay? So your believing is what makes it possible. You know, God's will may be for you to prosper and be in health and succeed and all like that, but it's your believing that makes it possible. So then, here's the thing. How does the devil deceive us and get us to believe his lies? Because we know he's a liar. We know he's a liar from the beginning. We know that there's, there's no truth in him and so on, right? Well, here's what he uses. In Numbers chapter 13, it says here, you know, that uh, Moses has sent out the spies to spy out the land and all that, right? And, uh, and so they bring this, this report. And they went and came and told to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They showed them this cluster of grapes being carried on a pole between two men. They told them how awesome it is. It, it's just, it's, it's what God said and even better. You know, I'm sure that's what they said. And they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sent us uh, and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. Listen, listen what they said, but nevertheless, now here we go, right? Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak. So those are, those are the giants. Those are Goliath's, Goliath's uh, relatives. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and so on. So what did they start doing? Okay? How did the devil get the children of Israel to buy into his lie that they can't possess the land, they're not able to possess the land, even though God said it was theirs, even though uh, Caleb tried to tell the people they were well able, God is with them and he'll help them and so on. Why did he get them to buy into his lie that they can't do it and they can't possess it? You know what he gave them? Facts. Facts. He gave them facts. That's how he gave it to them. See, and what Satan uses, because we know he's a liar. He comes in and just tells you a lie. You know, that's the devil. You're going to die. You're not going to. He's the devil. You're a liar. You just rebuke that. But what he gives you is what? Facts. He tells you facts. He says to the, this is what he says to the children of Israel. Yeah, it's great. You know, all that. Just like God said, and even better than what God said. But listen, but nevertheless, okay, the, the, there's strong people that dwell there. Fact, right? The, the cities are walled, Jericho, and so on facts, and very great. We saw the giants, the children of Anak, Goliath's relatives are there, giants, facts, okay? The Amalekites are there, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and so on, and so on. They're there. What? Facts. So how, what does the devil use to deceive us and get us to, to believe, okay? His lie is facts, all right? Because listen, he needs you to believe. He wants you to believe. He needs you to believe, and it's your believing that makes it possible good or evil. I, I don't have enough time for this, but I hope you got the, 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 the message and I hope, you, hope I said enough for you to understand it because you need to believe. You need to choose today what you're going to believe. Whose report are you going to believe? There are people that are told many times, you'll be dead in three days, two days, you'll never walk again, you'll never talk again, never see again, never hear again. People are told all the time, they'll never, you know, never, not you, never, it can't happen for you. It